You know, the other night when I was researching this video and putting together the script, I learned that eggplant is actually one word. I'd always spelt it and pronounced it as two words, egg and plant. But oh no, according to Wikipedia, it's actually one word, eggplant. Now I'm gonna have to relearn everything I knew and start spelling and pronouncing it this new way. But I'm thinking, am I too old to be learning something new like that? Of course not. After three years on this farm, one thing I've learned is that learning never stops. And if you are looking to learn something more about this particular vegetable, then you've clicked on the right video. We haven't had a crop story on the Mondo Farms channel for quite a while. You know those ones where we introduce a crop, we talk about why we grow it, we talk about how we grow it from the time of planting it, to feeding it, protecting it from all the baddies up to the time of harvesting. Well, this is a crop story about eggplant. Stay with us. Greetings from the farm. I hope you're well. It's so good to have you back with us again here on the Mondo Farms channel. My name is Chisha Folotia, and this is an eggplant. In some countries, it might be called an aubergine, and in other parts of the world, it is referred to as a brinjal. Vegetables in this family were first domesticated in Asia centuries ago, and it is now spread all over the world. And according to Wikipedia, in 2021, 59 million tons of this family vegetable were produced around the world. Different parts of the world have got different flavors, different sizes, different colors and shapes of the eggplant that they prefer. Here in Central Africa, we've got a type of eggplant that we prefer. And when I looked it up, the name was African eggplant, but ourselves locally here, we call it an impua. Now, impuas are small and round, and they kind of look like eggs, which gives you a clue as to where the name eggplant comes from. You know, I was just thinking back to my younger days when I was a lighty and my parents would force us to eat vegetables like eggplant and impua, and we absolutely hated it. It would be like, ugh, 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 ugh. But you know how you grow up and your taste buds mature, and you come to appreciate the flavor and the texture of these vegetables. And I now love impua and eggplant. How much do I love impua and eggplant? Let's just say that in our diets at home, we eat impua and eggplants once or twice or several times a week. Eggplant doesn't taste very nice raw. It's not the kind of vegetable like maybe a tomato or something that I would be able to take a big chunk and go. Nah, 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 nah. Eggplant raw it doesn't really happen. So it's mostly eaten as a cooked vegetable. Its flesh has the ability to absorb oils and flavors and bring its own particular taste to the food. Around the world, it's cooked in so many different ways. Think about it, you can do that with this. You can boil it, you can pan fry it, you can deep fry, it, barbecue it, you can roast it. Oh my God, you can curry it. And of course you can Pickle it. One of my favorite eggplant recipes is something that I always describe as aubergine, parmesan. So we've been growing different varieties of eggplants here at the farm since the very beginning of my farming journey. We started out with a lovely crop of impua that we put down on Riverside 3A after we had set it up in late 2020. And you know what? It was really good. It was an easy crop to grow, no major problems, and it was making fruits. Hey! Once or twice a week, we'd be getting a couple of saka out of it. Yeah. 
But the problem was we couldn't make any money. It just couldn't return. We take the stuff to market and find that uh, we only get a few quatches for all the large quantities that we were taking out there. The situation with import was so bad that the price is not quoted in kg, kilo, or whatever. It's quoted in Amasaka. So oof, that one was quite a challenge. And then I looked around and I realized that the European eggplant now, that was quoted in kilo. That was basically the same crop grown in basically the same way, but the price was something different. So after a while with some few other adventures we then started to plant the European eggplant and we put down our first crop of that in early 2022. We did a video um, about our first crop of the European eggplant that we established up at Westgate and I dropped that about a year ago, April 22, where we talked about the first four weeks of how we actually established and planted that particular crop. Greetings from the farm. Hope you're well. I'm here at Westgate and I'm taking a very quick look at the eggplants that we have here. And you know what? That crop saved our financial bacon. It was a real success and we were able to finally start making some money. I can't lie. We were struggling. We had been planting crops that were just not making money and we, we hadn't been getting it right. We'd been putting in thousands, hundreds of thousands of kwacha and millions even, but we were just not making money. So with the success of this eggplant crop, you know, that first one, we then said, oh, I could do this farming thing. Yeah, it can work out. Yeah, it can work out. As you know, in farming, there's a lot of ups and downs and it's quite an emotional roller coaster. When you've got a success, yes, stick with it. If this was a football club and we had a top striker who was doing his top striker thing and producing lots of goals, we'd give him a new contract. And that's exactly what we did. We planted another crop, much larger, double the size actually, of eggplant on another part of Westgate in around about April of 22. That was followed by yet another crop down on Riverside One that you may have seen in the video that we did about how we started our Venturi fertigation. And now here we are with this crop on Dubai 1 and 2. And it has been followed by a crop down on Dubai 3. And of course, we are already establishing the next crop at our new farm, Kimberley. Often on our videos, you hear me going on about this thing that I describe as our farming journey. 
Now our farming journey hasn't been like us starting from here, going to Kavwe or anything like that. Not that type of journey. It's about learning how to farm, learning how to be farmers. So you want to grow a crop. It's relatively easy to learn how to grow a crop, how to plant the seeds, how to put fertilizer and protect it and all of that. But the farming journey has also been about learning about how to be a farmer. And that involves certain strategies and practices. And one of the most important of those is something that we call succession planting. First of all, you start out trying different crops. Oh, let's grow this. Yes, let's grow this. Oh, this will be nice to grow. Let's try a bit of this. And then you learn through your experiences in terms of your expertise, how hard it is, how easy it is, and what pricing you get for a particular crop on the market. What time of year you should be doing that. And then you settle on specific crops and say, I'm going to be a so-and-so farmer. I'm going to be doing this. You can't be a Musela Kwa Kava and be successful in farming. Don't be fooled by those people posting amazing pictures on the WhatsApp group. Farming is a long grind in which you learn your trade. So succession planting, let's talk about what it is and how we do it. We basically grow the same crop in different series of what we call successions of the same crop. So we'll grow one, grow another, grow another, grow another. And it's got several advantages. Number one, one thing you're very sure of in vegetable farming is that prices will go up. Prices of vegetables go up at certain times of the year. Prices of vegetables go up due to supply and demand. Okay, we all know this. Now, with succession farming, because we're basically producing and harvesting all the time, we can ride out these, these price changes. Sometimes the price is very good and we make a very good return. A few months later, the price is poor and our returns are not that great. But overall, the ups and downs and our pricing and our income averages out over time. A lot of people have gone into farming, done one crop and then decided, ah, but you've got to be consistent if you're going to be farming as a business. Number two, through our succession planting and our regular supply, Mondo Farms is now well recognized in the market as one of Lusaka's most consistent suppliers of this vegetable, eggplant. So they know that other people might come in with eggplant for a while and then they'll change, but we will constantly have it on the market. The third major advantage of our succession planting system is that our team now knows exactly how to grow eggplant. They've built up quite a lot of expertise over the time. They know how to apply the drip irrigation at certain times of year in certain ways. They know how to make the beds. They know how to fertilize it. They know what how the plant looks as like as it's growing. When they see this type of issue, they see this type of problems and they are they've built up that level of expertise. Most of the successful commercial farmers, vegetable farming specifically, do one form or another of succession planting. Notice, I didn't talk about crop rotation. Now that is because on a farm the size of ours, we are able to rotate the crops on a specific field. So on this field, for example, here where I'm standing on Dubai 1 and 2, we had onion here last year. But this year we've got eggplant. After this eggplant is done, we'll do another crop. But that has nothing to do specifically with our successions because the successor of this particular um, eggplant crop is down on Dubai 3, as I said. There's another successor to that one at Kimberley. So our succession planting goes on and on and on. The most successful type of European eggplant here in Zambia is this one. It's called Black Beauty, and I'm sure most of you will recognize it. It grows as a medium height, bushy spreading plant that produces smooth, rounded, blackish purplish fruit. And these fruits can become quite large.
So now we start talking about how we actually grow our eggplant. So eggplant is a member of the Solonacea family. And so like many of its cousins, you're talking about tomatoes and peppers and other things like that, you have to start out with seeds being planted in a nursery. Eggplant is quite sturdy. It's quite hard, neolimba, which means that it is able to survive being grown on an outside open field nursery beds like these. So we set up these nursery beds. We usually do them two in a pair, and then they're about one meter wide. And then the length really depends on the amount and quantity that you have. We plant them at 10 centimeter spacings and we drill the seeds along uh, the row so that the seeds will have enough room to grow. We put in our sprinklers in the middle and then we will be watering the, the, the eggplants uh, seedlings quite regularly. So the seedlings stay in the nursery for about six to eight weeks, depending on weather and other variables, variety and other factors. And during this time, we are watering them regularly and we are also putting a lot of food. Children need food, our babies need food. And the type of food that we use at this stage of the uh, process of the plant is what is called basal fertilizer. And what's important about basal fertilizer is that its main component is phosphorus. Phosphorus allows and helps plants to be able to establish themselves and root development, which is really important at this stage because you need the little babies to grow up nice and strong. Sun's getting brighter and I need to keep myself hydrated. While the nursery beds are growing and the little babies are getting established, we need to move out onto where we will be taking them later. And that is what we call the establishment beds. This particular crop that we're focusing on in this video was destined for Dubai 1 and 2, where I'm standing. And the last crop that we had here was some red onion. And we had most of that harvested away by around October, November, just as the rains were starting. During the rainy season, we got a little bit busy and we, you know, we had soya beans and maize and all the other rain season crops that we were doing. So we we're just like monitoring this one. But by late January, we were able to send a team out here to start actually working on the actual beds themselves. But before you do that, you've got to get into the layout of the planning. It's an old cliche, cliche warning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So we needed to know exactly how the beds were going to be laid out, the various blocks within this block and all, all of that. Now, farming is a tough business, as you've heard people say, and many of you will have experienced it already. And there are no regular hours of farming. It's not that kind of thing when you say, ah, in 17 hours, to come back, imagine, more than 17 hours. Uh -uh, there's nothing like that. And farming involves a lot of long hours. And I remember one particular day when we were out here with the team planning the layout and the sun was going down. He did post straight up. Before Paja Pani come thing, in fact, a brush card. Yeah. Yeah. This is okay. And it's again, and now Kasara can three meters. I think where there's no, there's no danger. But then you will go to it. Yeah. You Unless he, your brother, your pick up. Then you see her. Then you see her. I have some kind of a tiny go from home. I have a day. Okay. Yeah. 
Samwe ya mchini mtengo umu Na ye chichani ichi Ichi tamunga Ya kula ukufuru Then ukusuku ni gari uku Kumbuyo Gari liya Gari So which means the gari Inabwe la so Yeah. My only pal. Where is the drainage? Is that Is that Is that Oh, oh, ah, 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 both matrix ya mkati na na msangu na na ya kunja ma wind breaker ma popular muskiri na 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 kwa sharina so once the planning was done and everybody knew how we were going to lay them out uh block a block b and block c here behind me on dubai 1 we then start the job of making the beds <laughs> Tiripa, Dubai one, eh, block A, Tufaka, compost. Now our beds are actually sitting on top of what are called fertility trenches. The fertility trench is basically a 30 centimeter furrow that's filled with delicious goodness that the plant needs. We use compost and we were able, we've always been able to make compost on the farm. We have a couple of videos of how we make compost on the farm and it's a major component of our um, vegetable farming. Some people use manure, but sometimes we even use a mixture of compost and manure. What is the difference? Hmm, compost is not manure, eh? Oh, <laughs> all right, look, the fertility trenches are set up and the spacing that we use between our beds is 1.5 meters. Now, you might think that's quite wide. And yes, it is quite wide for a number of reasons. It, the main reason is because of the way that the black beauty eggplant grows. It grows into quite a big bushy plants like these guys that you can see behind me. So when you have bushy plants uh, that are tightly spaced together um, you then have an ideal situation where fungal diseases can develop and one fungus spreads to another fungus to another plant. so while we can't really space out the the plants in a row we can space out the plants the, the rows in between i hope i'm explaining it properly this is a little bit technical but that's why you clicked on this video right it's not just for entertainment we are actually doing farming 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 so this 1.5 meter spacing allows us to reduce our fungal disease pressure a little bit later on when the plants grow up it also allows us to be able to work as we're doing our crop husbandry things like weeding we have teams of people come in and start weeding a little bit later they start pruning as you'll see later and of course when we're doing the spraying as well we have enough room to grow and finally when it comes time to harvest the 1.5 meter spacing and with the bushy plants allows the team to maneuver in between the rows in there carrying the heavy massacre of my fruits as well as the vegetable crates so the 1.5 meter spacing is one that we use for eggplants for cucumbers and other large vegetable crops like these um here we have our uh, nursery for, for the eggplant, which has grown, and uh, these need to be uh, transplanted in uh, in, a, in a week's time. 
Meanwhile, we're still keeping an eye on the nursery beds to see how they're growing. And as you can see here, we were getting under quite some severe pressure as the nursery was growing and the plants really needed to move. So uh, that's the point where we start now telling the team, hey, Chovan, Chovan, Giovanni, citizen, citizen, and start giving them what Pethias describes as my targets. Target, target, yarero, ni so, zafika apa, na apa. We always seem to be working under severe pressure for our teams that are working on the establishment beds and getting them ready in time for the transplants to come in. And the team has to work hard and fast. Fortunately, we have specialized guys that are good at doing this and they've had quite a lot of experience of making all the beds for our crops. The final part of the bed preparation process involves making the tops level. And finally, before we transplant, we drench the beds in one, a fungicide and two, an insecticide. This is because the soil is full of danger, danger, danger. One, mulima disease. We had diseases that have been in there for a long time, maybe came over from the previous crops or other weeds and other plants. And two, the soil is full of insects. It's full of things like cutworms and other grubs and stuff. So by spraying these biological uh, insecticides and fungicides, we're able to, to make the new home that our transplants will be coming into much more healthy and give them a better start in life. So I'm gonna come back with the sniff and go demand the gangari rafa. The problem so I go demand in Valai. Eh, I'm gonna shimp it because the man's gangari rafa. Yeah, I'm gonna meet with him at ten. For a size and scope that we grow here at Mondo Farms of crops like eggplants, we've now started doing our transplants in several rounds, one, two, three. So we make the first set of beds and then we do the first round of transplanting. We go in there and find the tallest, the strongest, the most ready to go. And then we move them into the establishment beds. Dubai, 1A, EV. Series of child transplanting. The team then continues making more beds, and in the meantime, what you have in the nursery beds is that once the big tall guys who were overshadowing Wanzao, they are out, the other ones also now start to grow. So then after a couple of days, you can come back in and do a second round of transplant. Dubai, one block B, which are transplanting eggplant. It's actually been very advantageous in terms of time and pressure. And you don't want to transplant your little seedlings when they may be not that ready together with others. And another major advantage that the one, two, three uh, round of transplanting system has given us here is that we then get a kind of inbuilt succession. If you think about it, the first ones that were transplanted, that would be on block A over there, they would then come in and they would be, you know, ahead of the others. Then a few days later, we transplant block B, 
A few days later, we transplanted block C, where I'm standing now. And then finally, the last round of transplants, the guys who were still too small at the, on the first day, we come and we put them into Dubai 2 over there. Um, we're here at uh, Dubai 2A, where we started uh, doing our transplanting of our plant seedlings. Ah, a pity chairman. Boss. Bwanji. Bwanji, boss. Puna, puna, na yafuna shanga kwa. Oh. Mm-hmm. Jindi shangi, boss. Nzaka kumbuka, kaya nkatari munga ini. Yeah, yes, nakawa, na sere. Eh. Eh. Inoni wani ambo choka, pa? Eh. Inoni wani ambo choka, pa? Eh. Oh, that's the specimen in your Devi. So after each round of um, transplanting, we then come into those particular beds and we install the drip irrigation. Why are we installing drip irrigation even if it's rain season? It's because you simply can't rely on the rains. You may have rains one, two, three, four days in a row, and then you may have 10 days or two, or two weeks with no rains. So if, when we do our vegetable farming, even during rain season, we still install our drips. Let's talk about the drip layout. So our beds are about 60 centimeters wide, and then we put in two drip tapes along each bed. Why do we do that? It's because of the sandy soils that we have in this area. Here on Chong, where we're sitting on a granite batholith, which gives us all of sorts of other issues. So we tend to be able to have to put in more water at, at, in a, on our, onto our crops. Why did we install the drips after transplanting. The expert farmers will be writing in the comment, you should have installed your drips before transplanting. Oof, this YouTube channel has got a lot of comments, people giving us some very strong advice. Thank you, always. Anyway, we were very busy. It was rain season. We had a lot of other things to do. Uh, this is Canada 2B. Uh, where we have our, um, our Pioneer uh, P38 of W. Um, which is almost reaching my height. So far is looking good. Worms. We have yes, the needles batteries. We have them in uh, Canada 4A or Canada A, Canada 1A. So where are we? We had our little seeds, we planted them in the nursery. We then prepared the beds, we then transplanted, and our little seedlings are happily sitting where they are, and we need to be watering and feeding and protecting them. The general term for this stage of the crop process is called crop husbandry. And I've talked about it before, 
I don't like the word husbandry and all of that, a bit patriarchal, but it is what it is, right? I can't come up with a better term. So let's talk about how we feed our crops. We need to give them some fertilizer. And that fertilizer is going to be able to help them establish again. So at this stage, we continue with the basal fertilizer that's high in phosphorus. The way we apply our basal fertilizer and top dressing and other fertilizers here on our farm, a little bit controversial, we have moved away largely from the granular fertilizers and we mostly apply liquid fertilizers and we do this through our Venturi system like this. Yes, so we're here at uh, Dubai. And this is Dubai 1 and uh, Dubai 2 is over there where the guys are with them sprays and now uh, here we've um, finally installed our venturi uh, the whole setup the system you've got your crops in the ground you are giving them good water you are giving them good food with your basal fertilizer uh -uh, you will get gate crushers and these gate crushers are generally called in our type of agriculture weeds mm -mm, weeds we not went weeds so regularly during the crop husbandry period we are constantly coming in to weed both within and along the beds make sure that right next to the little plant he's not getting unfair competition Weeds are very, 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 very bad for farming. And weeds can reduce your yields immensely, immensely. The scientists have done some numbers in terms of weed load and percentages and stuff, which I won't go into. You can Google that and maybe after you've done that, put something in the comments below. Weeds are bad, we don't want them. So with broadleaf crops like these, You'd think there was a selective herbicide, but it's not a risk we really want to take. Also, as conscientious farmers, we do use certain chemicals, but if we don't have to, then we won't. And we have enough of a staff complement, a labor force, as they say, to be able to come in regularly and weed our, 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 our crops. We also weed the areas around them because insects, stay in those weeds and they come in and they come and give us all sorts of diseases and problems that we really don't want. So as the plants are now firmly established, the root systems are done and it's now growing, it moves into what's called the vegetative stage. Now this is when a plant is growing from its little stage and it's growing its stem and leaves, leaves are getting bigger and bigger and things are happening, Wandini. At this stage, what it really needs most of is nitrogen. So we change the fertilizers that we apply to the crops at this stage and we move on to what's called vegetative fertilizers. And there's a range of them that we use that are specifically targeted at being able to provide growing crops with good food at that stage. Most of the introgen, introgen routine. So, one B B Omambira C B Mafaga So Murim So my Mamba C Then Dubai to Mafaga Mafago Dai So music, I'm tap a chicken drum. So I'm gonna tap a twenty pen and my 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 twenty dollars. Yeah, my twenty dollars. Say you have that.
So now your young uh, plants are growing and you're giving them lots of vegetative fertilizer and high nitrogen content. Everybody's happy and the leaves are growing, that they're putting on a lot of leaves at this stage. But not all those leaves go exactly where you want them to be. Think of this as your plant. We want the plant to grow nice and tall. We don't want leaves around this area. So every once in a while, we go in and we prune the suckers. And then during this stage, we also do some what we call basic food bal fruit balancing. Fruit balancing is a complicated process and that we're still mastering here at the farm. And we don't always get to do it 100% right, Mandite Timbepe, farming in the real world. Dubai, one block A. I think I've got time to choose some suckers. Choose some suckers. I'm gonna flower it. So, we choose some shemu, she not a wish of all right, because he still not in the bank of Vironda. I am a table with a summer cumia pansy. Hey, that shows our way. We grill a moon, she also encouraged a fast to eat Panga Vironda, the same with Fundura Swan. She moon, she so I'm saying that was because of no team as well. After the city, the city is a little bit of 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 Another major component of crop husbandry is protecting your crops. You basically want to look after your crop until it's ready to give you its yield, isn't it? Its bounty. And one of the two most dangerous things that affect crops are disease and insects. Diseases want to make your crop sick. Ooh, yadwala, yadwala. And then that's not, that's not a good, never a good thing. Your pests want to come in and eat it and you get a range of sucking, chewing insects that want to come in and oh my goodness me, farmers spend a lot of time spraying fungicides and insecticides onto their crops. Those could either be biological or they could be chemical. And on our farm, for example, we use varying degrees of biological and uh, chemical insecticides and fungicides. This is the stage in the video where we start seeing the guys spraying going Fing. If I do buy one block A, this spring, power pit plus Na, I should mix it in a mistress. So my insects, na wa fango, I wish to mix it. Just make this spring a mama eggplant. Another important aspect of the fungicides and insecticides that we spray is that we try and be as curative as possible. So there's a range of products that generally give general protection against a range of fungus, funguses that will attack uh, your plants, as well as a range of insecticides that generally give general protection, again, against the insects that will come in to, 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 to attack your plants. When when that doesn't work, we then go and we do get attacked from time to time. We then go in and we do what is called curative spraying. So you might find yourself with something like a red spider mite and then you start applying something like abamectin.
Uh, so we're here to buy 1A, where we have our uh, beautiful eggplant crops that are being harvested here for the first time, as we term it, the first gut harvest. So this is our 2023 eggplant, as we call it, the succession, succeeding crop of our 2023 uh, the 2022 rather eggplant so beautiful shiny eggplant that have been harvested here today nice healthy beautiful plant with flowers and uh fruits for the next harvest it's a beautiful sight as we go with it in terms of our fruit balancing so we have a fruit here and we have a flower here that will come for the next harvest then we'll have another flower here that will be for the harvest after this one, which is brilliant and amazing. Beautiful example of fruits that have already come up. So we've got this big guy here, which will be ready next week. And we've got the other guy there, just after this one, which will be ready the other week. And we've got another guy here coming up, which is amazing science and a good theory to experiment. And after a few days, we reach the stage that every farmer wants to be at. We get to do our first harvest. With a fruiting vegetable like eggplant, and as long as we're looking after it with the right amount of water and the reproductive fertilizers, we get to harvest about every seven to 10 days. And we normally get a few tons out of a crop the size of this one. Very good, nice fruits that are being harvested today. And every time we have um, harvest ladies, you have a split of two teams. One team is in the actual field picking the fruits, putting them either in sacks or crates. Then uh, we have the other team that's, on, um, that's under this beautiful trick here that are doing the packing in the sacks. <laughs> so these are the guys that do the grading the packing in the sacks. Bunch guys. So they pack in sacks, then they add the little on the top the map so that they don't fall. And after this, we come and weigh our fruits. It's nice big fruits. Then on the sacks, we write the quantities, the weight. And we get to do that for about three to four. We're now entering our sixth month and this crop looks like it is still balaling. Ikarikubala. So just because harvesting has started and we're now getting so much, so much from it every week and we're now starting to make some, a little bit of cash, a little bit of moolah, a bit of dough, some cheese, some dovo. There are so many words for money. <laughs> I can only think of one other thing in the English vocabulary that there are so many words from. 
Anyway, I digress. We've got to keep looking after the crop. And after each round of harvest, we come back in and spray a preventive fungicide. What's the reason? It's because when we are harvesting, we're pulling off the, 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 the fruits out of the trees and walking amongst it and doing all of that. We leave the plants with wounds. So the preventive fungicide, we normally use something like a copper hydroxide, a product like Copstar, is something that will go in and be able to, wherever there's Ichilonda, it goes in and it protects it and avoids from disease from entering. When you are doing this, it's really important to use a fungicide that has got a low PHI. PHI stands for post harvest interval, or is it pre harvest interval? Anyway, basically what it means is that from the time you apply the chemical, from the time that you are allowed to come in and harvest and take to market for human consumption, there's a period that is specified on your, your medication that is, that is there so you can't use something with a high PHI because then you wouldn't be able to come in and harvest the following week. Oh yeah, it's happened, we know. We have learned from experience. This crop here on Dubai 1 and 2 is now quite mature. We transplanted it at the end of January. It went through its vegetative stage and we started harvesting quite some time ago. And we still have some more harvest to go as we reach the end of May and we are going to be going into June. We don't see it finishing June. We know that by June, when a crop like this starts to get a little bit older, you start seeing one, reduced yields, your yields start going down, and then you also start seeing a lot more distress and disease. It's the natural life cycle of things. But hey, we're doing succession planting, aren't we? So we've already set in place the successor to this one. Down on Dubai 3, we are now seeing flowers. Flowers become fruits. Fruits become harvests. Harvests become cash, cheese, dobo, mula, and all of the other, other, other words. <laughs> I wanted to take a very quick moment to make a special mention to my wife. Now, making these YouTube videos is something that started out quite simple a couple of years ago. But as with me, and she knows me, I tend to not be happy to have one level of things and I wanna keep leveling up and I, you know, things and I invest a lot of time into researching, preparing, buy a lot of fancy gear and all of that. That. And throughout all of that, my wife has been incredibly patient and supportive. Last night was a pretty tough one. I was here yesterday afternoon filming this exact same video, but there was something wrong with the footage. I need to do the closing before the sun goes completely. After I watched the footage late last night and then I realized I had to come back in early this morning, she was nothing but supportive. Quietly supportive, but always supportive of this passion that I have for this YouTube channel. So, something very special uh, that I will say that only she understands what I mean when I say, Adrian! Adrian! And there you have it. This has been our crop story on the eggplant crops that we grow here at Mondo Farms. It is a major crop for us here. We have chosen to specialize in eggplants and we are now known on the market, as I said, as one of Lusaka's major suppliers, most consistent of quality eggplant. And it has helped us turn around the fortunes, literally, of the farm. And we shall continue to plant and specialize in eggplant. Yes, we'll go and do some pepper and do some onion once in a while. And during rainy season, we do those important rain season crops like soya, uh, maize, sunflower, etc. But eggplant shall continue to be the cash flow sustainer that keeps us going with regular harvests at reasonably um, regular income. That's what we need to make this farm work. 
Here on the Mondo Farms channel, we share my farming journey. From the time when I first set up this place, I came here late 2019, and we set up our first crop of trees in February of 2020, started vegetable farming in the winter of 2020 during deep lockdown, which was partly because other businesses were heavily affected and I had a bit more time and was doing some existential thinking about the future. Then in 21, we started doing these videos as a way of sharing and encouraging others along to also take part in the farming journey. Those who were thinking about it and those who've already started. Another rainy day uh, here in the February farm. It's raining outside. It's hard to be outside. So I just need to just hide in the car for a little while. Machines still pushing. Both machines can still push even in the rain. Uh, let's see what this uh, kind of breakfast milk, breakfast mix. Uh, for me. Is that my lunch? It's 13:30. <laughs> hey, the African farm story. It's happening. <laughs> One thing you'll notice on our videos is we don't give you numbers. We don't share our returns, how much we are making from this and this and that and whatever it is. We're a formal business. You wouldn't walk into a formal business that you respect and start asking them for their numbers, would you? Ao mwewe na Zambia, tulia kuata kumchi nshi kubanto na ma business ya waini. Ish. Okay, we get several comments like that and it is a trigger for me that my wife is helping me be calmer about and more understanding. This is our channel and it is a place that literally belongs to you as the viewers and subscribers. If you like the videos that we that we share on the channel, please give it a thumbs up. And if this is the type of video that you want other people to see, maybe other friends that you're doing farming with, other family members, or maybe your workers at the farm, then please share it with them. And if you want to be notified when a new video comes along, the easiest way to do that is to press the subscribe button and then if you press the bell icon, you will get a notification from YouTube. It is now close to lunch hour and I promise the love of my life that I would be home to eat lunch with. Ah, I shall be heading back to Lusaka now. I'll see you very soon on the Mondo Farms channel. My name is Chisha Folotia. Shale Nipo. Bye-bye.